A friend of mine runs an escape room in Colorado and asked me to build a sign for the business to hang out front. I started with the dimensions that she had and some design ideas based on some existing signage they already have and began a sketch. She supplied the colors that they needed for the text and the other elements within the sign. So I just spent a while kind of moving things back and forth, adjusting sizes until I was kind of happy with how it looked. One of the things that she wanted was for the letter P in Will You Escape to have it look sort of like a skeleton key. So I fussed with that for a little while until I was happy with kind of the size and shape of the key. I think it turned out all right. Also in the O, for you, she wanted that to look sort of like a stopwatch and a compass. So with a little fiddling, I got something I was happy with there. And with an escape room, since part of the idea is mechanical, you're, you're trying to figure out how to, how to get out of this room that you're in, she wanted to have gears as part of it. So I added some gears for the corners and then some smaller gears to just kind of set off to the side. I actually ended up redrawing the gears that are off to the side because they, the details were too small and I wasn't going to be able to make that work with the size that the sign needed to be. So I made them a little less defined than what you see here. So once I had some mock-ups done, I sent those off to her, went back and forth a little bit, making some little adjustments. And then once that was ready, then I was ready to build the blank. Since this is going to be an exterior sign, I used white oak. I think I started out with six quarter. Cut a couple pieces to be roughly the length that I needed. That together would equal the width that I needed. Ran those over the jointer so I could glue them together, get a nice clean glue line. Planed them to get them even in thickness and kind of clean up the faces so I'd have a good clean canvas to, to start with. Use the domino just to help keep these two pieces of wood aligned while they're gluing up. Use some tight bond three since this is going to be outside. And some of the SIPO dominoes, again, because this sign is going to be outside. Clamp that up, let it dry. Cleaned it again a little after the glue was dry. So the next part was to copy the sign to the sign to get the template over. So I printed out the drawing that I had done. It took several sheets of paper, and I'll do a separate video on, on how to make this type of a template. Copied that all onto the actual board, which I had spray painted white just to make the lines a little easier to read. Then using an eighth of an inch upcut spiral bit, I used my small router to outline all of the letters. This is kind of a rough outline, but I'll go back in later with my carving gouges and clean those up. I just didn't want to come in here with my full-size router because it's a little bit harder to control. The smaller router is really easy to control and get fairly close to the letters.
Now, of course, you could do this with a CNC, which I don't have, and if there's any company out there that wants to give me a CNC, I'll gladly take it. But I do like the process of hand carving the sign. I, I don't know, I just feel like it's got a different character than a machine cut sign. And yeah, I use the router for some of the cutting, but as you'll see in a moment, the cleanup of the letters was completely done by hand with chisels and gouges. Here I use the big router to clean out the majority of the waste. Just a lot faster that way, using the small router. And here I go in with the gouges and the chisels, getting to the lines cleaning up those letters and making them a lot more crisp than I can do with the router. It took... I didn't keep perfect time on this, but I think it was somewhere around six or seven hours per side to get all of the carving done between the router and the chisels and gouges. So it's definitely slower than you could do with a CNC. But it's fun. And some of the little imperfections that doing this all by hand leaves, I don't know, I just, it kind of gives it, it's kind of gives it something unique. I don't know. I used a detail sander to clean up the background because the router did leave some swirl marks that I didn't want to, that I didn't want to have show through the paint. One thing I'm not going to show in this video is doing the other side. This sign actually needed to be the same on both sides, so there's a, a very lengthy rinse and repeat that is not shown in this video. You may have noticed that the dot over the letter I under on Will has kind of a triangle shape. That's because the router got a little too close. I ended up making a new one gluing that in place. And I kind of wander a little bit when I'm carving letters kind of back and forth. I don't start at one end and just go straight across to the other end. I just kind of move back and forth, kind of randomly going from one letter to the next. I don't know why, I don't have a good reason, that's just how I do it. I think in the end, this just goes to show that while a CNC is certainly faster, you can get really crisp results by hand using traditional tools. It's not necessarily difficult, it's just time consuming and does require a fair degree of patience. Once all the carving was done, it was time to paint. This was all with exterior paints and sign paints. The primer was some kills. Uh, exterior primer that I picked up at Home Depot. And then for the colors, it's a mix of some Ronin paints and some Alkid paint also from Home Depot. done, I crated it up and shipped it off to Colorado. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the sign turned out. And here it is, in place out in front of the business. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. 
If you happen to be in the Breckenridge, Colorado area, stop by Real and Wild Escapes. You can check out the sign and try out an escape room. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more of the things that I do in my shop, go ahead and subscribe. We'll see you next time.